Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. Um, we were supposed to be joined today by our guest, Drew Gooden. Talent, YouTuber, poet laureate. Cool guy, blonde. Um, but I don't know where he went. We can't find him. So I guess we're just going to have to go on without him. It's going to be our own little thing. He did not give us any warning whatsoever. We, as always, are looking in. We woke up and started looking in this direction. And if anybody has seen Drew or knows where he is, please leave a comment down below. Um, and hopefully we can get to the bottom of this as soon as possible. Um, I haven't seen Drew. I could help you look for him, though. What the heck? I don't see anything within this field of view that's speaking to me right now. You guys got to turn your head just a little bit to the right. That's, that's a I, have like sore a, neck. I have like a crook in my neck. Oh, I woke up sorry. with like a very real crook in my neck and this is not a bit. You could turn your whole body then. Or you could turn our entire... Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. no. Oh, he shit. Looks so pained. I'm so where sorry. Where is Drew? <laughs> Dude, that hurts. Oh, you said you know where he is. Right. I do. Well, yeah, where I don't is know he? where he is. I have some clues, though. Okay. okay. <laughs> I saw some footprints. They were oh, Drew shaped. Drew shaped uh, footprints. Yeah, so he's he's walking around here somewhere. Okay. I would kind of like describe your footprints. I noticed when I sat down a butt print shaped just like Drew's. Hey, they oh, all like, have your face in them if you like zoom in with a uh -huh. <laughs> magnifying uh, glass. That's like a heated mug <laughs> yeah <laughs> once the jacket's warm i have to come clean i'm drew I i'm just kidding i don't oh, know where shit. he is true I, welcome welcome to the show so welcome back everybody. to the show mm -hmm. after a brief break a brief break yeah i haven't neither of us have done anything in the three years since kind of uh, just been sitting around just, getting just sitting around yeah kissing, getting laid kissing girls kissing. and stuff oh yeah or kissing girls to. dancing <laughs> like nobody's watching <laughs> Kissing uh, girls like nobody's watching. <laughs> <That's, laughs> kissing girls like there's no girl. Just um, my wrist. <laughs> did you guys ever practice kissing before you got your first kiss? Because I would do like the two finger. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I think well, so. Well, maybe you shouldn't have known about that. Nice, maybe I should have kept that to myself. Nice but bony lips. <laughs> I think I did practice kissing. So dry. Because <laughs> um, I think, yeah, because you're like exploring your, your own body your own body your you're like how does it work your own lips yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're like uh you're seeing romance you're like when is that going to enter my life mm -hmm. and, and when it does i'll be prepared yeah that's that was the feeling for me i didn't i don't know about you guys i got my first kiss when i was 15 mm -hmm. but i wanted my first kiss from like maybe nine on so oh, that was yeah. many years of like seeing you know uh Agent Cody Banks, or you know, all those. <laughs> right. There's so many movies. The Rizzler, Agent yeah. Cody Banks. The thing that stuck with you. The he's old like, Riz King. Before yeah, Baby yeah, yeah. Gronk. Before uh, he's, like getting a, he's getting a, a special gum that gives you powers and a <laughs> uh, grappling hook, and you're like, and a kiss, you say? And a kiss, yeah. No, that that movie specifically. He like backflipped by a pool and kicked someone, and I thought that's the coolest thing ever. And yeah. then he kissed uh, Hillary Duff at the end, and Damn. I was like so lonely, and I and I wanted that, so I guess I would kiss my hand. No, but that's <laughs> That's real. Jump over a pool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kiss my hand in the pool. I don't think I. Nine is young. Because that is, uh, that feels like it's romantic desire in a way. You know yeah. what I mean? Like right. movie romance. Kinda. Yeah. No, I remember like I would. I, my first crush, I was maybe even before nine. I think I was in like first grade. There was a girl I was like, oh, she's cute. And I was. So I. But How then old is I just. First grade. Like seven, maybe. So yeah, oh, maybe. Oh so yeah. that means like eight full years of. Wanting to wanting, kiss, yearning. And wanting to love. Honestly, eight love. full years, and I think it's natural that you eventually kiss your hand. You yearn for so <laughs> yeah. long. You try it out. You try something out. Mm -hmm. I had my first. <laughs> your brain starts to break as your soul collapses. <laughs> Dude, we got to get any kiss <laughs> we can muster. Up. Eight years is a long time to not kiss your hand. Uh huh. <laughs> I admire been, the restraint. Yeah. When did you get your first kiss? I think. Okay. So my first kiss was like really young. It. My Congrats. mom kissed me on the cheek. <laughs> no. Oh, <okay>. Um. <laughs> no. But I. Okay. This is. I don't think I've ever talked about this on the show before. Perfect. Uh, there was this girl that lived in my neighborhood, and she would always run around barefoot. We were like the same age, like seven years old. You're like, I gotta give me some of them. Toes. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> for free? <laughs> <laughs> I recognize those prints anywhere. Those are Coco's prints. Yeah. I don't remember her name, but maybe it was Coco. Coco Beware. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we would sometimes and this is like it was not romantic because like my brain didn't have the capacity for it okay but it was like we would go behind my house and we would like peck really like i so we like yep. pecked when i was like really like Damn. young 
See, that's because the we were just cuter, running around outside. That's, that is like what I associate. Like uh, when I was a kid, kid, mm-hmm. and I, ha- I had a kiss. That was what it was. Like, but I, was like, I didn't have didn't my even first... want to kiss, and you were kissing, and I was like, yeah. Please, Dude, and then for the, like nobody's watching, bro. <laughs> for the next eight years or so, I was like, I don't even need it because I've had it. And I've had it in droves. No, but I didn't have my first romantic kiss for a long time. I was like a pretty late bloomer. I might've been 18 till I had like a real romantic kiss. And that was your first relationship too, I assume? Yeah, because my, well, my first relationship didn't make it to kiss because the person had like hyper strict parents. And so they were like, and they were a rule follower. Sure. And so we were hanging out, we were holding hands. We were like, like kind of like hugging (laughs) and stuff like kind of getting, it was almost like, it was almost like we were edging the kiss, but it like the kiss never (laughs) came. Well, that's what, when I think of like, um, I guess it's typically like religious couples yeah. who are younger and they they have such strict rules to follow. But so they can do everything but, you know, have sex or in this case, even kiss. So they're right. just like really like riling themselves up. Yeah, of that sounds like torture. they get married. Of course, yeah. they oh, get married. Of course you have to. As soon as humanly possible. Yeah. Be like if you get married, you can eat this meal you've been cooking for five years. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm so hungry. Please. <laughs> Please. I'm so hungry. Whatever. Did, I just have to say you... some words. Mm-hmm. Real quick, I just wanted to say we just released a Jarvis Johnson Gold Inspire Your Premium collection over on Jarvis.store. It's a merch drop. We've got a new merch partner. We've been working on it for a very long time, and I'm finally excited for you to see it. We've got sweatshirts, sweatpants. We got shirts, long suit shirts, rugby shirts, lots of cool stuff to check out. I can't wait to see people posting photos in it. So head on over to Jarvis.store to check that out. Did you have a lot of, because, you know, we're both from Florida. And then shout out Florida. Shout out Florida. It's cool. Hey, I, fuck you. I still live there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you something still. Else. Okay. Down, down south, Florida. <laughs> that's down that's a British south. hand signal for uh, I'm a fan of this. Yeah. It's okay. what we used to do in the Coliseum. Oh. <laughs> yeah. In the <laughs> so Coliseum. Gaslighting. The yeah, Roman Coliseum. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, Florida does suck. Except for Central Florida was cool. Every Central Florida is cool. Northern Florida, Southern Florida. I, I yeah. agree because I'm from North Central Florida. Is it, okay. Is it, yeah. Is there like a associated regional oh, yeah. chunk because florida is very uh, different Florida's depending huge. Where the you more, go, yeah well there's a saying the more north you go the more south you get like if you yeah. get north florida the panhandle you're basically in alabama yeah but orlando where we live is is pretty liberal pretty yeah. like accepting of a community you know there's yeah. some uh some like art scene like you got like there's the pretty good improv scene there and yeah scene, you know it's, it's a big it's, tourist and it's a big spot, right? big city yeah because yeah. uh, there's disney world and the magic playlist live yeah, magic playlist live 2017 yeah oh people still come there and they're like, just to see the i mean late center. Yeah, yeah they are late unfortunately <laughs> but just to see the ghost of playlist past oh, i remember that's where jordan tripped over the small fence leading to the pool at the hotel because he was trying to they actually made a statue of broke his wrist yeah did you really yeah it fucked but i ate shit so hard oh, in no. front of two very cool women <laughs> and I, I struck out like one wrist was striking out the other was striking out as it also hit the ground wow and then i embarrassingly got on a plane the next day more hungover than i've ever been to this day with air pressure making my wrists hurt more Ooh. and what a big baby i was even for how much that hurt i was no a big i baby. think i think that that sounds bad well i'm glad then for your sake that they canceled playlist but that was me anyway yeah. I landed on the organizers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, that must have been traumatic for you just to even see the logo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt really quite yeah. bad. Oh, I did um, it. But yeah, like, so, yeah, for me, it's like, yeah, North, North Florida is like South Georgia, basically. Because mm-hmm. like uh, oh, our, our friends, some of our most Southern friends that were close to Jamie and Jessica, they live in a small one, like one traffic light town in south georgia called nahunta and it was like really <laughs> it's not a real place it's i know and it's uh oh, we I, should say they're in a popeyes we Popeye went there too. for like a wedding or something and uh we stayed like a 200 year old hotel with like a attendant named madge who would like sexually harass you but awesome. she was like so old that it was you let it happen yeah. she'd be like mm, oh, 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 what i could do with you and you'd be like um, so where's my room she was like i'm gonna make an extra key for myself and you're like don't please don't <laughs> please, do that okay put my room though yeah, and it I had like an a key. iron. <laughs> Can I have just one key? It had an shirt? iron that you needed to put on a stove to heat up. Oh, cool! Like, because that's, I guess, how that used to work. But so. um, we would both we bonded. Uh, me and Jamie and Jessica, they're twins. 
uh, because we would both uh, travel through the Jacksonville airport <laughs> because it was equidistant from uh, from where I was in Gainesville and where they were in Nahunta. So um, something about Florida. Oh, yeah. And then there's Miami, which is a totally different place, totally different land. A whole different world down well, there. That, yeah. See, I always forget that Miami is in florida mm-hmm. like that my brain doesn't even compute that it it's definitely like, like its own thing it feels uh, like new york new york just miami comma miami mm-hmm. state miami mm-hmm. miami <laughs> miami city miami state oh it's like Moon's that over. um that frank sinatra song <laughs> where's my miami miami, <laughs> miami. <laughs> which one's new york right? is it the one with the apple can i catch a flight there <laughs> <laughs> um r.i.p maybe so yeah. what do you guys want to talk about uh a lot of Frank Sinatra stuff. I yeah. <laughs> I actually did have something I want to talk. Wait. Well, I, I do want to start by saying if anyone saw the last episode, because we were just talking about this before yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah. That was three years ago. That was like beginning of the pandemic. That was the worst mental state I've ever been in. When I look back on that podcast, mm. I don't I haven't watched it back since, but all I know is I was sad, I was anxious, I was a shell of a person. I'd like to bring the opposite energy to oh, the show today. Okay. Hey, I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, hell yeah, oh dude. God. That's exciting. He's Jordan, crying. Jordan had a depression <laughs> afro because he was afraid to go to the afraid to oh, go to the haircut. And now yeah. Look, yeah. look at it, his hair's as short as can be. It hurts so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have gone. <laughs> yeah, no, I had really long hair then too. I think that was yeah. well, maybe not in that when we filmed, but it got pretty long. Like all the videos I look back on then, like I Cause like the only way to get a haircut was Amanda cutting my hair and yeah, it was tough. Like to get a haircut back then. Yeah. Cause there, there was, it was so risky. It was yeah. so scary. Nobody it felt was... like the idea of getting a professional haircut in the 1600s. Yeah. Like, yeah oh, you do it yeah. at home, but and if you you're part of the sharp bourgeois. Blade. Yeah. yeah. You need, you need to trust like somebody with a very sharp blade next to your head and they didn't have razors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, it was it was very dangerous to get a haircut then and leave your house and but I'm happy now, man. Dude, so. that's I'm really glad to hear that. Well, people, yeah. you know, for as sad as we all were on that episode of Sad Boys, <laughs> it, I do think that the episode meant a lot to people because yeah. uh, you know, you spoke about panic attacks. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people hadn't heard you speak on that type of thing before. We were just in general talking about mental health. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Damn, we really got into it, but I think it was a cry for help a little bit. For a little all of bit, us. Yeah. yeah. I think no, I think it's good to share that stuff when you're going through it because I I, yeah. I did appreciate it at the time. Well, one us talking about it was cathartic, and then seeing other people, I think, relate to it was cathartic for us, but then also cathartic for them to hear us talking right, about it. Right. So it was at the time a very necessary thing. Yeah, I agree uh, for everyone involved, especially um, with like it's in that moment of time. It didn't even really matter what your what your surrounding lifestyle was, the standard of happiness was so incredibly <laughs> yeah. low yeah. in hey, mid-2020. Absolutely. Everyone was going through it. So, What's bringing you joy these days? Um, I Well, I I think, well, part of the reason I was thinking about this too is like I, I've posted a little bit less this year than I have in the past. And I've seen, I think I saw one thing on like my subreddit where people were kind of wondering like why i haven't uploaded as much and then because i've talked about anxiety in the past they've kind of assumed filling in the blank yeah assume like oh he must you know he's talking about mental health maybe he's like kind of struggling and that is occasionally true but i think actually this year it's more the opposite where i feel like i'm actually in a good place now i feel like kind of removed from some of that anxiety i've kind of worked through it and i'm just like enjoying life life. Mm -hmm. i know and it's actually really nice to do that uh, we just like Amanda and I just went to Europe for a couple weeks, oh, yeah. and that was really fun. Whereabouts? Uh, we went to Switzerland and uh, Utrecht in the oh, Netherlands, which was, that was really cool. Um, shout out to a, my homies in Geneva. Shout out to my homies in uh, where else in Switzerland have I been? I don't remember. Okay, you went for the convention, right? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, <laughs> I, I've been to Zurich. Uh, I went. I've been to Zurich twice. Once for a, a meeting at the YouTube office. Fun mm-hmm. fact: they the have a YouTube office. Google there? office in Zurich is where YouTube Studio team is. Oh, interesting. So I had a meeting with them, and I was like, "You guys know it's bad, right?" Rem- it was. It was at a time when um, <laughs> it's bad. It was at a time when the uh, <laughs> news was when you had a ten out of ten. They speak that too. Okay. No, in, in, dude, in Switzerland they speak three languages. They speak German, yeah. English, and French. It sucks. Well, dude. yeah, that's uh, yeah, and that they was, still can't choose a side. <laughs> um, <laughs> you've got all the time in the world. Uh, remember when you get would get like a ten out of ten on YouTube and it would be red. 
Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah, uh, it, it was like <laughs> now it's like it's already bad enough that it's, when things were down, so it was red. A bad idea. It's on fire. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, what like, the oh, hell, man? It just says L. Yeah, I mean, they still when you're one out of ten, they do the fireworks. fireworks. So it's sort of the opposite of that, where it's like, great job, like yeah. they give you that little dopamine that you're only going to get ten percent of the time, right. statistically speaking. Like treat so. your dog, don't yell at them when they're bad, right? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's they give you positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but you told them don't do that anymore. I said no, and they were like, "Okay, cool." Nice. Um, well, thank you for doing that. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, but yeah, it does bum me out that the the team that does like the analytics and the team that does the like front end for studio are in two separate countries and two different time zones, and it really does, you know, click when you're like, "Oh, the communication for these teams is not as tight as it should be." Yeah, and that probably results in some issues. Uh, but that's not to take away from your. Uh, vacation you were in yeah it was great yeah switzerland utrecht. was beautiful uh utrecht was where we went first that was utrecht is like uh a little bit uh it, it's near amsterdam and we didn't stay in amsterdam typically when people go there they stay in amsterdam right but amanda has a friend who lives in utrecht oh cool so she wanted to stay there and everyone there was very confused because it's not very touristy they were sort mm. of like oh why are oh. you here and we were just like just experiencing the local the culture of the local you're like you're an art supply store here in america <laughs> yeah but it was it was so fun to just be somewhere that wasn't like super touristy and just kind of like live there for a few days i love that yeah it was Im- so immersion as opposed yeah, to, yeah yeah as opposed to like because then we you know eventually went we went to like london and saw like big ben and you go there and it's like you How's take a picture uh, he's not doing so well i think he's, he's so small though. yeah <laughs> he's probably going to transfer to hospice soon. <laughs> 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 really struggling Lost He's, another big homie yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah my uh, big homie medium ben um <laughs> like a russian doll <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they take the they take him off yeah, put a, so a card of away time left but it's eventually will be teeny tiny ben and <laughs> teeny then tiny ben, yeah. there's no more layers to reveal <laughs> what yeah. time is it um <laughs> Yeah, uh, but, throwing it to chaos. but you it's go like there and like everyone's just taking photos and it's like, this is cool. But you kind of just feel like, I mean, I live near Disney and you go to Disney and it's the right, same kind of no. thing. Like we live where you vacation, but I want to live where people live, not necessarily where people vacation. Or I yeah. want vacation where people live rather than vacationing where. Right. So there's, being there's in, a p- reason they live there. Yeah. <laughs> they might like it. Yeah. No, it was really cool too. And then like comparing it to America and like everything. And now being in, in LA for a couple of days too, it's like, you can't really just like walk around. Mm, you have to yeah. drive everywhere. But being yeah. there... We saw like hardly any cars and just bikes everywhere and you just walk back Ugh. and forth and there's so it was so cool like it's we annoying that, you know, how well shit is put together i know and you're like yeah. this is possible yeah. we could just like it's have crazy. a walkable area and just like it just feels so good to and i actually going back to the mental health thing too and on the topic of walking that's one of the things that i think has helped for me a lot it's such a cliche but i started going on walks every day and it's mm. like the greatest thing i've done is just going outside because it's so easy for me as a youtuber who works from home to just sit inside oh, all day about it. in yeah. the ac but just like going on a 20 minute walk especially when the weather was nice and it's just like I'm not listening to a podcast, not listening to music or, or being on your phone, just walking around. It's like, oh, this yeah. is great. And then to have that, to be in a society where that's like factored into your daily life, right. it makes sense why uh, they're generally happy. so often just, I feel like I, it's, I almost feel disincentivized by how that's been almost like robbed of its like a uh, 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 recreational emotional value and instead mm-hmm. been retrofit into wellness and Rogan mindset. Where <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah, I get up and I, get in the ice bath yeah and I, make, I swallow five bull testicles uh-huh. like, can i just let's just instead of vilifying people for being a little inefficient in the morning and maybe being depressed let's just like let's not jump to invest in a thousand dollar tub uh-huh. or, or put yourself in an isolating cabin and you can think yeah, about get it a sauna someone. installed in your own home just yeah like take a walk that's yeah, actually good. Open the door. Yeah. <laughs> open the door, stretch. walk outside. Yeah. Stretch is hu- huge. I, like medically huge. I just mm-hmm. saw some clip and someone was like, yeah, by the way, you're like, you watching this are fucked up. If you're like scrolling through anything, your body is fucked up. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. stretch every morning. And, and it is. Yeah, just feel yeah. a This morning I woke up and I couldn't move my head because I had like a nasty like crook in my neck and I'm still working through it. But I like... Um, I can kind of turn towards Drew, but it hurts more than it usually does to look at Drew. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. thank you for <laughs> sacrificing your own uh, comfort to. Hey, look, not look all heroes wear capes. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
We'll be right back to your regularly scheduled sad boys. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service with the mission to empower each and every person with confidence through fragrance and scent. They've created a great way to discover, shop for, purchase, and experience new fragrances. Scentbird subscription is a great way to deepen your knowledge and experience of fragrances. I learned every single thing I know about fragrances due to my Scentbird subscription, and that's true. The three that we had this month, do you want to hold one? Mind Games Grandmaster, Rose Absolute Coffee. Uh, I've got Sicily Paris's Lo Reve Dubert. With Scentbird, you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for only $17, and they have a lot of other options as well. They carry popular, well-known brands like Prada, Gucci, and Versace, as well as indie brands like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. They have perfumes, colognes, and plenty of unisex options. With each fragrance, you get a 30-day supply, so you can try it out before committing to a full-size bottle, which could run you $150 or sometimes even $300 to $500. In addition to the two cents we already mentioned, we received My Son 21G Paris Ocean Odyssey, and we will be fighting over that one. Arr. Click the link in the description and use our code SADBOYS Ding! to get 55% off your first month of Scentbird. That's just a little over $7 for your first month. Available in USA and Canada. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this here video. Now back to the show. Are you following, well, the season just ended, but are you still following basketball? Um, oh yeah, very close. I've been I've been deep in it. Well, actually, I got way deeper in basketball during the playoffs than I like ever have. And the playoffs now are so fun. It was so fun, so many cool storylines. And then now I'm officially in the YouTube algorithm of every trade rumor and stuff okay, like that. Yeah. So I'm just getting I'm I've got like my new favorite basketball YouTube. I think I've always had favorite basketball YouTubers, but now I'm I'm in the thick of it. And it's fun to have a new hyper fixation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've only uh, gotten into basketball in the past like five or six years, but like I'm like really into it now. And yeah. The playoffs are so fun. Like even if you're not, you don't have a rooting interest, like there's a period where there's like two games every day and you that, just, it's, you oh, just it was to, all I would do like, every night. Yeah. We would record and then I would be like, I can't wait till 530 here. Yeah. But I would be like, I can't wait till 530 and then I can watch the games. I know. Yeah. And I would stay up super late on the East Coast because like the yeah. West Coast games start later and it's go, they go to like 1 a.m. But did you have like, any teams that you were enjoying watching during the playoffs? Um, My, well, I, I like the Nuggets. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a Magic fan. Me from Orlando. They weren't in the playoffs, but yeah, next year championship. Baby. Yeah, baby. Um, You're gonna make sure that happens. I'm gonna make sure that happens. Yeah, yeah. you didn't if, really contribute at all this time. I didn't that. do enough. I didn't. I, I'll, I'll say that there's uh, lack of success, success this year was largely on my shoulders. Yeah, was on because you, it, because you, <laughs> I was too busy walking. You've been out of the league for a few years. I will say. Yeah, <laughs> you I googled have, Drew Gooden. Yeah, he's a retired basketball. You player. know, I'm the other guy though. That I'm not the. I guess you brought yeah, up basketball. Course. I, I that makes sense why you bring it up because you assume that I'm the guy who used to play. I'm just a right. fan of. Yeah, of course. I make YouTube. Which one are you? Video. That was a question. Yeah. Wait a second. Yeah, <laughs> we would have contact. Yeah. We right because you wouldn't have made, wouldn't that, made that, that mistake. You would, you would never make that mistake. Maybe I am. Yeah, like he's because he's like a weird little loser. But then yeah. I, I used to play basketball. Yeah, that guy I like pretends I, to eat like Tom Brady. Like he's a pretend pro athlete i know yeah he wishes he was he me. wishes yeah kisses his kiss on the lips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i used to play basketball you're right that checks out what was your um, like uh because i really want to i have like any the small beats of times where i've been like involved in some kind of tournament storyline like i've known about it in mm -hmm. any athletic i've really enjoyed it yeah but i found the the entry point really difficult i know that um the last dance was good for a lot of people oh yeah mm -hmm. i enjoyed that as well but that era of basketball i am somewhat familiar with like, right right right, right. Way. so to get super contemporary is it just a case of just exposure therapy you just have to watch it enough for it to sink well in? i think um I think with sports and part of the reason I like basketball and football so much is like it, it, it's fun to watch, but it also there's so many like storylines involved and and that's what really draws me to it. It's yeah. this live theater that I think a lot of people who don't watch sports maybe don't like even Amanda who uh, uh, who's never really been into sports. She's gotten a little bit into basketball watching it through me because like you start to be like. 
uh, like on the magic, there's this uh, Markel Fultz. I love his story. He used to be the number one pick uh, by uh, the Sixers. And then he hurt his shoulder. He had this weird, inc- you know, this accident. And he went from being like the super hyped prospect to like a bust. Like he sucks. He can't shoot anymore. He can't do this. And then, you know, he was kind of a, a, a loser for a while. And then he's revitalizing his career. He kind of like, and it's just, you, you learn about these guys and you root for them. Yeah. And it's just like. The storylines are so interesting. Like, for example, there's this guy on the heat so first of all the heat themselves this year had an incredible story because they performed really poorly in the regular season barely made the barely made the playoffs through the play the play-in tournament or whatever and then they it's kind of like a ragtag group of a couple of stars or at least like star level players. Really just one star, Jimmy and Jimmy Butler. Butler and a then, pretty good player in Bam Adebayo and a bunch of undrafted of guys. Undrafted, undrafted guys. And then, but also like a coach who is like a protege of Pat Riley, this like, uh, you know, Mount Rushmore, Mount figure Rushmore of figure of NBA. basketball. Yeah. And, um, and a guy who like joined as like a video guy in the Miami heat, like, uh, org when he was like in his 20s and yeah, now is like work his way up to being the best coach b- and, and his way yeah. up to being a coach with like this crazy basketball iq and like really everybody's like giving him his flowers which was really cool to see because he won all these championships with the heat when uh lebron, LeBron james and Dwayne, Dwayne wade, wade and chris yeah. bosh and stuff were on there but n- now you're like people are like okay yeah he is one of the best if not the best coach in the league just on an x's and o's like um standpoint yeah. but uh but there's some of the like undrafted players, there's this guy, Caleb Martin, who mm-hmm. was uh, let go from the Charlotte Hornets, uh, works out at a gym that like J. Cole, either the rapper J. Oh, Cole either this. owns yeah. or frequents. J. Cole had a connection on the Miami Heat and just said, hey, check this guy out. Yeah. And then that guy ended up having some really important minutes. He ended in, up like, being the, the reason they beat the Celtics to go to the finals. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love the stories like that. One of my favorite players uh, on the well, Nikola Jokic, I'm sure even people who aren't like yeah. following basketball, he's just so funny because he's just there's videos of him just being like, like after they won the championship, he's just like, <laughs> job's done. I can go home now. He's so excited. And then they're like, do you know the parades on Thursday? And he's like, what, <sighs> what? I can't. No, I have to go home on Thursday. What? Because he just like he lives in Serbia. He just wants to go home to his horses and just be on his farm. It's, it's so, the same it's just so funny because you were showing me those clips. I was showing him those clips because I couldn't because I want to like. I my social battery was like at zero the night before Chrissy's party, mm-hmm. but then um, there was a birthday, birthday yeah it was another birthday party that Jordan was hosting at his place, and we also wanted to go over there to get some of the drink dispensers for the party. And so Chrissy, I was talking to Chrissy, and she was like, "We're gonna show face, we're gonna go," and I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna drive myself over there get these things." do a little socializing. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I was leaving the party, I wanted to send somebody the job's done. I can Mm -hmm. go home now. (laughs) Like, but I was like, nobody other than Anastasia, there's nobody I know who's like super into basketball. I do find myself on instinct and I had to fight it like immediately. But when I saw that, my first thing was to do what I think a lot of people would do. Not uh, a vocal minority, but like some people would have the instinct to do when they see us talk about emotional stuff Mm -hmm. and feeling depressed and having those low moments and say like, well, you're not allowed to do that. You're living the Yeah, you make $35 million a year to play basketball. It's a dollar a year. Though nowadays (laughs) you could be, nowadays it's a little bit like poor LeBron James because he's making three million less dollars for two years than XQC XQC is for his kick contract. Non-exclusively, yeah. Yeah, What a collab that would be. What a freaky Friday that would be. If they switch bodies. Yeah. Can you imagine? Switch over, we can say the N-word. It, that's it's like the little dicky song <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. that was kind of weird right that was so bizarre yeah but everyone loved well, it and also it was with chris brown yeah, i know it's just chris brown Ooh. i wouldn't have worked can he with stop him. can he just stop he really, he can he seem really to cannot seem to stop he like yeah. beat up y- usher like yesterday like he really can't stop being aggressive <laughs> the fuck yeah like not He's yesterday go. yesterday but we like, gotta get rid of him we gotta someone's <laughs> gotta do something about that guy he has like yeah. a trump style present <laughs> drew are you playing any games lately um yes cool loser got him no, I, mean, no, I don't play games got take him away journalism. Um, take him away yeah i've been playing tears of the kingdom i've been playing uh, that a lot um <laughs> i've been playing uh 
uh, Clone Hero a lot. Oh, Yo, I've been really into Guitar Hero. Oh, wait, um, did we talk about it on the bonus? We, we talked, talked about it on the this? bonus oh, yesterday. Really? I, didn't, I didn't listen to that because I don't give you guys money. Relax, well, also, no, we literally recorded it. I'm yesterday. relaxed. I'm chilled out. So chilled unless out. you have like this is about the basketball thing. <laughs> unless you had like Rel- double uh, punch. <laughs> 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 unless you had like a wire, you wouldn't have heard us talk about it because it was oh, literally yeah, last night. Yeah, no, but I've gotten really into Guitar Hero lately. And oh, okay. Okay, so listen, I have a plan for, I gave you like the tour of the house. There's Uh like an activity room that's like currently unused. I want to turn it into, it'll have other functions, but my secret function is is the Guitar Hero room. I want to get all the instruments. I'm trying to figure out which consoles I need to buy to get the biggest library of the games. Well, so the best thing to do is, or what I did from watching a bunch of YouTube videos, I bought a Wii guitar i bought an adapter for it to do it on pc and then you can get clone hero which is yeah. free and you can download basically an infinite number of songs you can clone just download hero is good the whole like guitar hero and rock band library is just one zip file yeah. basically but then also what i really like about it is like my niche music interests like uh these like screamo hardcore bands yeah a lot of the people the the venn diagram of people who play clone hero and who like the music i like the yeah. circle is pretty big oh, so yeah. i'll search on this website and like find these very niche songs and then get to play them on guitar hero i mean look it's so you're fun. preaching to the choir here back in the day i used to go to guitar hero tournaments <laughs> i used tournaments. to tournaments like, yeah i used to i so we're I used talking, to like you were like through expert. the fire and flames yeah, yeah. Uh, and you're probably better than I am. <laughs> well, I, look, the muscle memory is probably like <laughs> not so good anymore because yeah. my f- fucking forearm would be on a fire from mm. uh, from playing. But I do have to. It's a game you have to take breaks often because also like just staring at it. Yeah. For, it's like then you look away from the screen and you're like, <laughs> I was truly yeah. a beat saber you, addict s- through COVID. Oh, and oh really yeah, beat saber is so fun. Getting past the motion sickness was the first six months because I would play it a couple hours every day yeah to the point where i bought a sweatband because it would give you acne oh if like there's too much yeah i i had to get yeah to take breaks sweatband, um, plastic rim that you can put around the top uh-huh. um you've got to be lonely that's a big yeah, step yeah, yeah. no big. lovers in your life whatsoever no, no kisses, no kisses. Yeah. <laughs> double punch <laughs> Dude, there's gonna be and I know, I, I can even guess who will do it, like of the Sad Boys community. A They're gift. going to love that we held <laughs> combined <laughs> fists and <laughs> double punch um, through. Okay, yeah. but yeah, so when I was in high school, I would go on, um, there's this there's this website called Score Hero. It used to be like a mm. high scores website for a guitar where people would like post their like FCs and their full right. combos, you know? Right. And um the thing I got really into, speaking of downloading all the songs on a zip file or like the people mm-hmm. program, you know, songs you like, there was a community for that back then. And uh, and there were, it wasn't called Clone Hero, but there was a Clone Hero type Guitar Hero style game that you could play on PC, but it just wasn't very good at the time. Mm-hmm. But you could burn custom tracks to a custom Guitar Hero 2 like I would burn my own tracks to a custom Guitar Hero 2 disc, and then I would use a swap magic on a PS2 to load in my like custom song. Okay, so you actually charted the song yourself? I didn't chart it. I okay. would download the charts. Oh, gotcha. So gotcha. you could still get the charts, but then there was like a basically a tool that that like took the shell of a Guitar Hero 2 game and like replaced all the songs with That's the songs sick. that you would load in. And uh, that was it's why so much I, easier these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you had to yeah. do it like all manual. But yeah, that's that's awesome. Because even um, even that's like I've been doing it for a few months now. I'm actually part of it is because I'm doing a video about Guitar Hero and oh, nice. Clone Hero in general. But I just keep putting off finishing the video, so right. it just keeps you know. I'm gonna, make, um, I'm gonna make it first. Do what? I'm gonna make it when I get home. You're gonna oh, make, he's gonna make gonna your make video. video. Sh- fuck, dude. And then everyone who watches this is gonna make my video too. Damn, dude. Yeah. Well, I'll spoil it. He, the, oh. the the thought of it is like, because I play guitar too. And I, so when I was young, I used to play Guitar Hero. And then eventually I played the guitar. And then this idea of like, can playing, get, can get, re, can getting really good at Guitar Hero actually make me better at playing the real guitar? And then I have some stuff kind of playing in there too. That's but fun. then I just keep playing Clone Hero and, mm-hmm. I, and I just That's get fun. really into it. But I also am at a point now where I, I learned how to like, 
chart songs too. Oh so shit! Then I'm like, because it's pretty like there's all these like super user friendly softwares yeah, to do yeah, it. Yeah. And I've done a couple songs that like I couldn't find someone else to. And then that's right. that's its own thing too, because you got to like get the exact right BPM. Otherwise, it's a little bit off, and right. you gotta like fuck with that. But it, tr- but, it, it j- straight up just orchestration. Like it's so precise. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then you got it. You know, you have to general idea of pitch. Like, well, would this? You, okay, ah, shit. I'm running out of notes to go higher so i guess mm. i'll start here and go there yeah, you have to like it's loop so back fun, around yeah, it's such yeah, yeah. a time suck where i'll sit there for like three hours and be like oh shit you're like gonna become a music producer i feel like this is like what 13 year olds do and then they become jack right or but I'm, I'm 29 and i <laughs> i'm not learning anything helpful in the music. it's just it's just so i can pretend to play the guitar yeah, right i'd be way better off just learning the actual guitar for but these songs that's what people always said when i was playing guitar hero as a just kid just learn the real guitar yeah, yeah. fuck off i'm no. having fun it's I, fun it is a completely i think guitar hero is a better comparison to like piano okay I yeah learned, I, I learned piano after guitar and mm-hmm. i'm not good at either yeah i just like both right and piano is by far the more like uh methodical learning the exact pieces in the exact order not mm-hmm. that i mean obviously it's not there's like tons of interpolation of jazz and that's a yeah. thing but in the case of guitar the immediate gratification takes so fucking long it's yeah it's 50 hard. hours before it's at all fun yeah in a way that like if you had a kid that really enjoyed rhythm games even beat saber or, or yeah or dance dance or something i would be like play like piano might, if you are going to transition which you don't Absolutely. have to because you can just fuck around on the piano and kind of figure it out guitar like i couldn't even i tried to play guitar when i was like 12 and i couldn't even press hard enough on the <laughs> yeah, strings yeah, for yeah, it to yeah. not buzz so yeah. i was like this doesn't work for me my body physically cannot do this <laughs> you so. i will say jordan you say you're bad at piano but like i saw the arc of you like hyper focusing on like music theory and piano and in in my mind you got very good at piano very fast so Thanks, shout dude. outs, shout outs. Yeah, I'm that. sure you're just being fake humble. I'm being phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, I figured. I you figured. guys, something of, kind of your piano hero. You know, oh, shit. Okay. I always right, did think that, that a tool like, okay. I, I think there's an app for this now, but I did think that a tool like Guitar Hero could teach me how to play piano better. Oh, like yeah. if there was a mm. Guitar Hero for piano, that was like a real like had the all the whole keyboard yeah or at least just the the whatever like a few octaves yeah just one or just mm-hmm. one octave because yeah. then all they all you know repeat. yeah exactly it's just the same notes but I know yeah that there was there was dj hero at one point there was dj which I, was kind of a flop but there that was, was like such a strange miscalculation to me dj hero that was yeah that well that was like you know peak edm and dubstep i think 2012 or 11 or i don't yeah. actually don't remember exactly when it was but then it's like you're just moving the knobs back and forth and you know if, if, that just that feels exactly like almost one step too far away from uh-huh. the fidelity of playing it yeah. like if if you play dance dance revolution on a controller it's like still valid it's just just a little too far away from what the thing you're emulating is yeah if guitar hero was just like again a keyboard it's not as a you know you're not holding the axe it's not, I, it's not like the same yeah okay does anybody remember the ds guitar hero uh no i never played it but no. in researching it i i, I, I it had it stylus. i played it so you it had an attachment that you would put inside of the ds and it would give you like a yeah. The ability to like play, I think it was only four Whoa. buttons instead of the normal five. Mm-hmm. And it was like kind of where the, um, if memory serves, it's where the Game Boy Advance slot on the DS was, like a DS Lite. Uh, I think it maybe plugged into that. Okay. And that's how it like locked in. And then you would kind of hold your DS sideways. Oh, and by the, you mean like, um, and then the, like strum with the stylus? And yeah. You, that sounds oh, way harder true. than It was the, like a carpal tunnel device. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Only damn. children can play it. Yeah. <laughs> if your hands are large, yeah, your bones yeah. will grind to dust. Well, there's the, uh, I, it is, I know it's because like we were smaller people, but mm-hmm. it is beyond me. I remember playing so many DS games with the claw where my little, my little, my pinky would be on the top of the controller oh, yeah. and my stylus would be, he's like a, uh, a, uh, Goldeneye Rogue Agent, I believe it was called, uh-huh. a very poorly uh, ported FPS, uh-huh. and it would. It's kind of like when you put goggles on, you know, like that, that yeah. whole thing. It was truly a like yeah, twisting doing around gymnastics with your fingers, which just now like, is like I'm EMT needed. Like, <laughs> as soon as I do that, crack sound. Yeah, pop. you need to be doing that in the uh, lobby of a hospital <laughs> just in case. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right there. Yeah. Officer, doctor, officer, <laughs> Doc, doctor, officer, professor. Thank you so much. 
Your Honor. Um, <laughs> not not yeah. understanding what hospital is at all. <laughs> I don't know who's, <laughs> what any of these jobs are. I'm sorry. I performed a citizen's arrest. <laughs> <laughs> is that real, by the way? <laughs> Citizen's arrest. Yeah, can you do that? I wish. It seems like you can. Uh, one of my um, yeah, everyone's. You ever drive and you there's like the just the worst, most reckless driver, and you're just like, I wish just for five minutes I could pull them over and be a cop, <laughs> but I'm not allowed. Right, I'm not. I just wish I could. <laughs> and you would probably shoot me talking a, to because I yeah. live in Florida. You can't put yeah. a police light or whatever on my roof. Can I put just like a little red and blue light that I have for fun? Can like, I get, at least use a loudspeaker and say, slow down, sir. <laughs> I'm the police. <laughs> I wish I wish I had I a- I wish I was the police. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the Navy SEALs. I, sh- I can't pull you over, but I sure would like to. <laughs> I wish- Sir, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> well, then they might actually- Oh, uh-oh. Is that better? Oh, I wish, yeah, um, you know, when- I don't know what driving is like in Orlando, but in LA, people are kind of wacky and wild on the road. <laughs> I've noticed. And and a lot of people are very impatient in times where, for example, you're at a stoplight and uh, you can't go forward because there's cars in front of you and also the light is red. Mm-hmm. Um, someone behind you might not see that the light is red and they might say, why aren't you going? Not thinking to themselves. So they honk. They're not allowed to. So they honk. I wish I could back honk. Mm. I have had that same thought. <laughs> yeah. I w- and I also wish I could back honk where it said a little phrase. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like like one be... where it goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> or there, there needs to be different yeah, yeah. types of honks for there sure. Do need to be, there yeah. needs to be a gentle honk for when you're j- like when the light turns green and you wait, you know, you give like yeah. two seconds and it's just like, hey, buddy, you're hey, not paying attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, not like, ah. They, all honks should not be all the same. All honks sound so aggro. And yeah, sometimes you need to honk backwards. Right. I, if you honk, people, the person in front of you is going to assume you're honking hit them. Because like, then like, they're just like, you, now we're both honking at you <laughs> yeah. to, to, for the red light. Imagine and, how stressful life would be if you could only yell. Yeah. <laughs> you just kind of, I'm just only yell in front of you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Walk. <laughs> I guess it's sort of what it's like to be like a cat, you know. I was thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. You don't express any, any nuance. It's just sort of like, hungry. <laughs> thirsty play it's just all they all mean the same i'm yeah, trapped honestly. in a human body <laughs> why am i in a house i'm a wild animal <laughs> yeah, a, i cursed is... a witch and she cursed me back <laughs> um yeah. yeah i do feel like it causes unnecessary aggression because mm. the feedback loop is so like someone mishears something because i've definitely not been honked at but someone in my like hearing range <laughs> was honked at and then i was like what How, the fuck am I doing wrong? Right, I and do I'm that like, all the time. I'm like, no, wait, no, that's not for me. You know, it is mm-hmm. an Italian American transformation experience. That's what it's almost designed to do. It's, oh, I'm driving here. They, they have so many good, surprised, frustrated sounds. I'm oh, a, oh, on. Mm-hmm. Now you're, you when you said transformation, it made me think of like a magical girl transformation <laughs> sequence, like in Sailor Moon. Like, but but like instead of like uh, getting new clothes and becoming like a superhero, I become like an Italian guy named uh, Vito the Lips. Vito, Vito, <laughs> Vito the, the lips. lips. Hey, they call him Vito the Lips because he's not hey. got any lips. Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, I'm walking. Yeah, me, <laughs> me and the boys outside of an Italian restaurant, we just like doing our transformation sequence. Yeah. Hey. I consider myself to be a pretty calm person, but when I'm driving, that's when it all comes out. That's mm-hmm. when any oh, yeah? sort of, and I try not to take it on other people, but it's more so I'm doing everything right. I'm a perfect driver. I've never done anything wrong. And everyone else. I have the receipts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it yeah. in Florida you get? Uh, b- both. I mean, so far here, I mean, it, it, there's people who just sort of just like, oh, I'm going to get in your lane now, but they're like directly. It's like, and yeah. I've, I've had to honk a few times. And yeah. It's sort of, well, the it's, roads aren't very, the lanes are very narrow here. I've noticed. It depends on the highway you're on too. Cause the highway getting here, if you were on the 110, you're on LA's first highway. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I feel like they didn't, but even not on the highways, just driving through the street. It's oh, like, I yeah. feel like they're so like yeah. close. Like, and, and I feel it's like, you you uh you know wobble a little bit and suddenly you're impeding in the other lane and i'm sort of i'm so i'm like some wide-eyed some, especially like, some streets for whatever reason they'll be so narrow already and then you're allowed to park on both sides of the mm-hmm, street mm-hmm. so the driving area is not the length of two cars it's barely the length of one mm-hmm. and it's a two-way street so you yeah. have to do this weird dance where you see someone coming off then you like pull pull to the yeah, side as much as you can pull into someone's they, driveway so that they can get yeah, fast I, yeah i had to do that 
uh, driving up here, yeah, actually. Um, I, I do wonder what it's like for, I mean, you reference being in, in Italy and Italy being in Europe. <laughs> you reference yeah, being yeah, Italian. Yeah. Yeah. There's no one mentioned in Italy. You reference being in the old country. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sicily. My ancestors. Yeah. It's like, I ain't got no lips. I lost me in Sicily. Why, 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 they, why don't there? they have lips? <laughs> <laughs> they don't get it. But they don't, I think, when you reference being in Europe, one of the things you reference is it being walkable and, mm-hmm. and cars being less emphasized. I'm curious what the like in like the 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 momentum inertia stop the whiplash is for somebody that moves here or even mm. just anywhere in the I mean when we moved when I moved to San Francisco I never drove and nobody drives in San Francisco but the experience of having to to say get to to Oakland outside of taking taking the train which is good but it it's not walking it's not it's not yeah. on the bike or whatever there is a part of my brain was broken by the fact that I'm just in this quote walkable city in California. It's just a bit less likely to hit you with a car, mm-hmm. but everything might still hit you. Yeah, so you still have to have your head street. on a swivel at all times. Yeah, you never know. And I don't think there would be. It's it's like uh, moving somewhere where you're just surrounded by mosquitoes all the time. You just have to like change your lifestyle. And yeah, get it's. I'm sure it's such a shock because it's. It, you're just so used to like. Okay, it says I can cross. I'm going to cross, but it's like just because you're just because legally it's, you're supposed to cross <laughs> doesn't mean that there's not a car barreling towards you anyway. <laughs> that was the biggest like because I got my driver's license at 29. In in mm. in LA and I was just took driving lessons and fortunately I think that was like the safest thing for me to do because there was a professional dr- LA driver who was teaching me the ropes of LA driving yeah. while also teaching me the laws which are not the same thing <laughs> and so like all the time I would just be like Hey, that's not allowed. And he'd be like, correct. Yeah. That's not allowed. But you're gonna see it all the time. And I was yeah. like, okay. You still have to be prepared for yeah, it. Yeah. So like defensive driving is key. But I just can't I still have a little there's a little part of me, and it's maybe the like teacher's pet inside of me or something, where when I see somebody change mm. lanes without signaling, I'm like, you didn't sing- signal. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Because I'm like you'll find I'm him like, in the right. I go, it's a good thing I'm paying attention because yeah. uh, history will be on my side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're just like barreling into an orphanage. So it's like just <laughs> knocks you off the road. And like, I think you'll discover that I will actually win. I have a new respect or there's there's certain things now as a pedestrian I won't do because I realize how annoying it is for drivers. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. when when you're like, <laughs> like if you're under tree cover or like behind a trash can and then you just try to run across the street and a car like cannot possibly see you and then suddenly you're in the middle of the road, horrifying mm-hmm. because they don't want to hit you because it would ruin their life. It You could kill you, but it would also scar someone for the rest of their... Thank yeah. God hitting someone fucks your car up or they do it all the time. It does right. feel that way. They just yeah. literally be like, ah, oh, I'd be like hitting a bug. I'm like, oh, my yeah. windscreen. Just a mild it, uh, obstacle in my day. <laughs> yeah. Out of that would suck to yeah. just be, to take a little cheeky run because you wanted your coffee a little earlier to just be rolled. The number of times that happens because people just don't. I have multiple, they, they're all fine for some reason, but I have multiple friends that have just been hit by cars yeah. on country lanes because I'm from the countryside mm-hmm. because they were just like, I just wanted to go now. Yeah. I want to be yeah, walking. You hear about that all the time or like, um, or people who are like riding their bikes and they're legally allowed to ride on the streets oh, in the inner residential area. That's the same, but then they just get they get killed because oh, they. I terrifying. used to, to place wear, I used to ride through my incredibly hilly, no visibility anywhere mm. college town. Everything's a one way. Pedestrians on both sides. I used to ride down. My brakes didn't work, so I would just use the heels of my mostly busted sneakers to slow down. Like a flint these down. are fuck, these are like X Games inclines. Sure, yeah, and I would just do that through the center of the high street wearing headphones <laughs> and, my, and no helmet because my you know when you're like. 20 you're just like i, I can't die yeah, yeah i can't die i'm the main character yeah <laughs> that kill me off everything revolves around me Excuse well, me get experience. out of the way <laughs> in san francisco there's such a bike culture but it's also so dangerous for bikers because of like what you're describing people just don't people just either don't do the right thing or they're not looking for bikers or i don't know but it's it's incredibly scary to bike like i used yeah. to bike commute to work for it, a while in San Francisco, yeah, yeah, um, and it was like a pretty short commute in a straight shot. But every time I was around cars, I was scared. Well, you were, <laughs> yeah, your main road right the whole way. 
Yeah, I was on a main road the whole way. Yeah, but then there's also the other side of it where like if I'm driving a car and I have to slow down because there's a bike in front of me, I'm sort of like, get the fuck out of here, man. I know. Like, it's so, it just sucks because it's like I wish it was more normal for there to be just bikeable areas, but it's so poorly ingrained yeah. or integrated uh, that it's just it's sort of just like it's dangerous for them and sort of a inconvenience for everyone else because it's like, okay, I guess I'll drive 10 miles per hour because right. you can't go any faster on it, this road. Anytime someone pass, like I'll be walking on a sidewalk and then like mm. a bike will be on the sidewalk passing me. My first thought is you're not supposed to do that. And then my second thought is okay well then you're on the road yeah and if, if the i road, were them i would rather be on the side i would rather be on the side i'd rather be too. the uh, predator than the prey yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'd be high, you know you're higher up in the food <laughs> yeah, chain yeah that's here. true and uh, my thing is like okay well unfortunately if i'm walking on the sidewalk now you have to get off the bike for a second you have to go around me on your feet <laughs> yeah because you're on a bike mm-hmm. and i'm a guy and well, you can hit me with it yeah i know the, the worst it, i guess is i don't the worst is i'm like who is this conversation for everyone um yeah a lot of people get hit by bikes <laughs> no that's real uh the worst is that like when yeah when you're in a car i think it's just like being acknowledging in a car you were in a thousands pound death device <laughs> uh-huh. and even though a somebody's Nissan like bullet. <laughs> yeah someone is like i the other day i was entering the um on-ramp for the highway and someone was biking on the sidewalk and I, my brain was like, you're not supposed to do that. And then, but then they also, instead of waiting for me to pass, like just like sped up and like biked across the, in, the, the entryway to the highway. I was like, I'm like, are you a bike? Are you a pedestrian? What are you supposed to do? You're like a transformer, but yeah. I guess I get, I, I've just got to deal with it. And it's like a minor inconvenience to me. So whatever, you know? Yeah. What if? I guess we won't, Kill anyone with our cars. That's what I'm thinking. And yeah. woke Today. friggin' bike. I know. Brandon's <laughs> Thanks, bike. Sleepy America. Joe. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. I was making myself laugh the other day. Just, but you know, you have to, right? And then Brandon's America. Just yeah. thinking of a guy that is just like. No one else is going to make me laugh. It's, I got to do it myself. It's, it's, I was just thinking about a guy like, hey, can't say anything anymore. You know, with Joe Brandon's woke America and these pronouns. But they think like pronouns are like like trees they're just like completely wrong on what they are or like uh-huh. a meal like if everybody's allowed to have a different meal these days you know what i mean <laughs> i mean what's up with that they have no idea why they have to be pissed yeah that's not even that far from the truth though some people are just, just so mad and they don't even know what they're mad about yeah or that's, specific like of, they're like i'm gonna go in target and i'm gonna destroy the place and it's like why yeah <laughs> all of those clips are so funny because they are the most timid fucking coward the whole reason they're subscribed to culture war anti-trans ideology is because they're boring yeah. and annoying so when they go in and knock over the stand they kind of delicately do it with both yeah. hands because they don't want like the six four security guard to shove them or right get mad. Yeah. well even before the more recent target stuff i saw one like a couple months ago that was like this is the boys section look at these shirts and it's like it's like a, a colorful shirt. It's, it's like, like a yellow shirt. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's exactly it, though. And then, like, I actually went to Target like a few days later, and I was like, "Let me look at the shirts." Because, and then it's like, yeah, there's a small section that's like colorful shirts for boys, and then also the normal like, or you know, the typical Spider Man and kind of. Sh- it's like, yeah. okay, if you, God forbid, your son wear a colorful shirt, then buy him the Spider Man shirt. Like, yeah. calm, calm the fuck down. It's always with by a guy that's like in a size too small wash faded Punisher t shirt. <laughs> from like t- 2001. Very cool shirt though. Yeah. It's like, sick. He Why does he always awesome. love the Punisher? It'll be the weirdest stuff too. Like I recently learned about the hashtag pure blood um, thing, which so sounds racist. <laughs> yeah, it sounds it's like a, a Harry Potter slur. I think it's more than sounding racist. <laughs> well, but would you believe it's actually a COVID thing? Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, like I didn't yeah, get vaccinated? I haven't contaminate, contaminated my blood with the vaccine. Oh, uh, yeah. I know. I, oh, I've seen that for a while, yeah. Yeah. I I, can, I did it with the I disease. I started that, actually. I'm working, <laughs> that's why you've seen it for a while. Yeah. I, I'm working on a video where like this, po- it's like one of those podcasts where... um. They invite like a hundred people oh, on. Yeah. On there's like a million microphones. <laughs> and Have you ever seen one of like a Mr. Table? Beast video? No, I no, invited a no, hundred people on my, my podcast. God. No, no, no. Let me yeah. just show you. I invited a hundred people and have the worst take 
<laughs> about whether white people were better than black people. Yeah. It's like, well, keep, this podcast like, has a viral like clip of someone saying something terrible all the time where it's like, it looks like this. Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't mean literally a hundred. I was no, picturing, but, I but yeah, no, that, yeah, well. they always have way too many fucking people <laughs> and it's just, yeah, they bring someone on. So they can say something they think is dumb and the whole clip is just them being like, this fucking idiot. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or it's, yeah, or it's a trap. It's not even that dumb. They like yeah. bring a guy in, they call him doctor and he's got a PhD in Gucci slides. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. like what the fuck? Yeah. Like, but yeah, one you of know the teeth are actually made of gold. <laughs> yeah. One of the guys. <laughs> are, teeth aren't bones. <laughs> Like, no teeth okay. are bones no they're not no nope. let me let me touch him let me see it what uh, if then, your girlfriend okay. is on instagram i would like i would hate that yeah if my girlfriend was on instagram <laughs> take it on my teeth <laughs> uh, that's always the thing i can't too. talk because i got no teeth yeah. um there was a but yeah th there was a guy on there who th that podcast specifically the whatever podcast it's like they bring on like conservative influencers, like a couple of them, and then a bunch of OnlyFans models mm -hmm. or like literal college students, yeah, uh, at, who are not like versed in discussing these. Yeah, like, they're like, not they're the not most ready. articulate people. They're not dumb. They're and not their prepared for bad, a debate. But they, yeah, they're not. They're yeah. just average people. It's right. Right. just like the, the classic model person. of like you know, oh, debate me, and they you know, or like holding a microphone to someone on the street and having all your talking points prepared, but then they're just sort of like, well, I think, and you're like, you're talking over them. It's like one v one me in Smash Bros yeah. Melee right now, and it's like I don't I, play I've that game. That. Like, oh I don't yeah, have to, well I can yeah. kick your ass. Yeah, well I can kick your ass in it because I I have no value or stock. I don't <laughs> use that currency. I guess yeah. exactly. Yeah, but and then their audience comes to you and they're like, "You won't fight them in the marketplace of ideas. Why won't yeah. you? Why won't you one v one Final Destination Fox <laughs> only, dude? The I only reason you wouldn't want to do that is because you're wrong. Yeah, no, not any other reason. You don't play spaces. Interesting. And then you're just like walking away. Yeah, of course, yeah, that's why Stephen Crowder goes to colleges or did. Before, yeah, now, yeah, you know, because it's a bunch of nineteen-year-olds who are like on their way to class and aren't ready for a debate. Yeah, I you know, literally, it's like you can de debate a teenager on any topic and win. Yeah, <laughs> they're yeah. teenager. It's like a boxer who's undefeated because he only fights toddlers. <laughs> yeah, like, congrats, man. A one thousand percent win streak. I guess today. the earth is flat. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson will beat my ass if I say it's not. That'd be a cool podcast. But yeah, yeah, uh, you invite a thousand. Oh no, I wasn't gonna play a clip from that. I was just gonna say uh, okay. one of the one of the dudes from it. I like went to his page and it was like American flag, eagle, oh, hashtag God. pure blood, and then hashtag Bitcoin. <laughs> 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 I was like, why is that Venn diagram a circle? Web three. <laughs> Yeah, might as well just say I've lost so much money the past three years. <laughs> I saw this recently. I saw this this morning and I don't know if it's real. Like someone tweeted, I keep seeing videos of Brandon T. Jackson acting like he's doing stand up comedy and using a laugh track and never showing the audience. And so now I'm watching this. I watched this clip thinking about that and it made me laugh so much. I get mad at the doctor like, hey. Baby, you are you smashing the count? Like what, what? Like what happened? What it was? Like what? And then the irony of it, he came out white, but he was born on Malcolm X's birthday. <laughs> Just, why did the clip start where it did? This is incomprehensible. I don't understand that what he's saying. It, this, I wonder if this they is laugh parody. the whole time. They I, never stop laughing. There's a part of me where I'm like, is this parody? Because it is just like parts of joke setups. Yeah. It literally sounds like the audience is mic'd. They're yeah. so clear. They have the same level audio levels as oh. him. I don't I think, think this claim is the claim he... isn't that he's never done stand up. <laughs> yeah. It said that specific clip has very weird audio. It's also yeah. very high fidelity and it's it, not from an hour. It feels you know? like it's, it feels yeah. like a movie version of stand up comedy where like right. you cut to someone doing stand up in a movie. Yeah. And that's what it looks like. And then mm -hmm. like uh, it's one of those ones which is just all about how New York's really just a big town, you know. It's like it's, its own character, and then they walk around and are pensive about their pretend job. <laughs> there's so many people in the city that never sleeps. Yeah. I could go for a nap. I'm so weepy. <laughs> um, there's another thing that I saw this morning. <laughs> Wait, <Fun. come> on. <laughs> Hello, bounce, bounce, bounce. If that ass ain't wiggle, I'm sorry, that's three strikes, baby, you're out. Oh my. Bigger or smaller, it don't even matter. Just shake it, don't care to your mouth. Ho, oh, I got a problem. Hey, what the hell was that? It's time I ever go get that bag. Photo, click flash. Now I'll never forget that ass. Is... What? Okay. What is the is he a musician independent of that or is he doing a song but is like normally a guy that you know watches slime videos and just like whoa 
I think he makes music. I just I just cringed a lot. I saw it on this like cringe um Instagram page that posts like weird TikToks all the time. It, mm-hmm. it, and it just made me laugh. It's just like the way he raps is really awesome. It's just like it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, uh, Curtis and Jenner are in town tonight. If oh, cool. we want to do anything before we head to the big, oh, uh, I've got a pretty full day today because then I'm gonna oh, yeah. go. I'm gonna go film something with Joel and okay, then cool, cool, cool. Got something else going on tonight. So. All right, cool, cool, cool. But Joel Haver, yeah, you been watching his movie channel? His movie channel? I was complimenting. I was complimenting him on it the other day. He's relatively recently maybe a few months ago started like a movie review channel oh, no, with a very he, maybe last week put out a video about why he's doing that yeah. and his just his perception of what movie criticism should be or can mm. be is so different it's so much more about like the sentiment of the exact moment you're in the theater as opposed to everybody's takeoff well once you leave the theater you realize it wasn't that good it's like sure it's yeah only but when you already, you're in there but the experience yeah I love Joel so much. He's yeah, one of my favorites. He's such a like, like out of so many people on YouTube who kind of just like do it because they can make money or they can do it for yeah. fame. He's just like an artist. He just yeah. like loves making shit and he's so pure and yeah. just true to himself and he makes exactly what he wants to make. I don't know if you've gone back and watched any of his like feature length films. There's one in particular that made me cry. It was so good. I forget what it's called. Um, uh, pre- he has a movie called Pretend That You Love Me and it's just... I watched it and I cried. It was so beautiful because it also he filmed it during the time when like his dad was dying and mm. just a really, oh, really I remember great story. This. I didn't watch that. I forgot that existed. I should. Give it's from like three years ago, I think. It's like, but it's just like the dialogue. The way he did the dialogue too. It's sort of. It feels almost improvised. Like the and it probably is somewhat because he's has all these different scenes and it's it, the way he strings all. It's just really, really interesting and it's so so up here creatively mm-hmm. compared to everything on youtube including yeah. the crap that we make yeah, it's like exactly. it makes me feel like oh shit like I, I like the videos i make but i'm not making like right. art you right, know right, i'm not right. making like I mean, something what, that's moving people right or, just think thing about joel is his output plus that that's yeah he is he's, oh, yeah, like he's also just compost. a machine he's yeah just, yeah he's uh i mean christ dude from he had that era of just traveling and making sketches uh-huh. he didn't live anywhere yeah he lived <laughs> like in his van i guess or i guess he was staying with people but yeah he's just he's the best it's really peculiar like he also made a great uh i guess you long form video or short film or film um but he made a great long form video with dax that i mm. i've never be I, I don't get starstruck anymore <laughs> but when uh we went to katie's birthday because she's very close with joel oh yeah dax was there Oh yeah, and then Dax came along to my party recently, and I was starstruck. I was <laughs> just like, from the because I think he's yeah. a really, really admirable artist as well. I, oh yeah, he's awesome, and he's, he's a testament a... to like. I've never liked the idea of like what's real, what isn't, because it's just I don't know. It's like boiling down creatives to to like artifice. Like, yeah, does it Vin really Diesel matter? is he an actor or not? And it's <laughs> yeah. like no, he just is also weird, like yeah. independent of being an actor. Uh-huh. And like Dax is just a fascinating. Yeah, he's such guy. a unique guy, and he is very funny. But then people are like, what, what is it? How much of it? How much is that a joke? And like, yeah, it's a. But he's sincerely, you're allowed to do jokes and also be a little Yeah, peculiar. or just We're be weird. kind of like an exaggerated version of what's already true. Yeah. Like what's already part of you, yeah. I don't know. It's That's, great. That feels like such a specific, very small generation of YouTube that we, because there's that old Bo Burnham video where he's talking about Dax at like oh, yeah. VidCon oh, 1. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. It's in black and white for some reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been cranked. Every time Bo says something, the screen pauses and his, letter, his, his words <laughs> yeah, are on a no audio, screen. but um, yeah. But he didn't tell link to Yeah, ragtime music. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the internet, ragtime. <laughs> um, what was the thing you were going to... Oh, yeah, I was going to ask about... Because uh, you, you mentioned the contrast between now and the previous time we recorded mm-hmm. being like pretty significant we've stayed you guys have been re- relatively close since then we didn't know each other in person mm-hmm. but we've I've, we've all been more or less in the loop with each other's lives in a light way since then yeah but i don't know if there is if you could point to one major catalyst with the ind- like separate from obviously the pandemic okay because i think um a lot of people almost got robbed of their agency of talking about what was difficult at those that point in their lives because there was this yeah. fog 
Like, yeah, I had a terrible 2020, but also the pandemic. Happened. Right. Right. I, well, for me, so much of it was tied into the pandemic. I think um, the big thing, I became a hypochondriac during the pandemic. Mm. And that is something that oh. stayed with me and something I've had to work through where, and I guess I, I talked about this a little bit last time, but like I, up until I was like 25, 26, I never really thought about like my health or dying or anything. I was sort of just living life. I didn't go to the doctor for like five years. Um, and then all of a sudden I'm like hyper aware of how I feel at all times. I'm like, is this a symptom? Is this this? Oh, what what right. is this? And then, and then once you start doing that, once you start Googling shit and then going down that rabbit hole, yeah. then it was just, and I've had to really work through that. And that's taken a while to, I, I think almost, at least once at, at, at any point or, you know, at at least one point during every day of the past three years, I've thought, am I dying? Is this mm -hmm. cancer? Is this? And it just never goes away. It's this like super pervasive thing. Yeah. But having to getting to a point, I guess, where it's like it's become a cycle where it's like the thing I was worrying about then was nothing. And now I feel the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's right. It's nothing. It's like I've gone to the doctor. I don't have this. I. I, your brain is too powerful. You can manifest symptoms. It's still good to obviously get things checked out if you feel like something's wrong. But like, I just like, I have the capacity to like, oh, my chest hurts. What's that? And it's nothing. It's anxiety. It's right. my chest hurts because my chest hurts almost kind of thing. Yeah. Or like- and Now it hurts more because I'm afraid. Yeah, it, now I'm thinking about it. Now I'm hyper it. aware of it. Yeah, yeah, it's all I'm thinking about. And it's like, or like, wait, am I kind of out of breath? And then as soon as I stop thinking about it, I'm I'm not out of breath. I'm oh not, yeah, where you like forget to breathe and you give yourself a panic attack because you're yeah. like, did I forget? Do I not, not know how to do this? Oh fuck, oh God. Like that came out of nowhere yeah. during the pandemic for me and really became a big part of my life. And, and it's really only- Un recently where I've sort of like experienced every fake symptom and been Ugh, like, but that's yeah. nothing. So stop yeah. worrying about it. And it truly for me has just been like, well, don't think about it or just like, or acknowledge that you can't just not think about something, but acknowledge that it's there and just be like, dude, it's fine. Or, right. or even being like, if it is something, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do about it? What is right. panicking about it? Right. Gonna no, do? exactly. Yeah. Cause it's so much of like anxiety. And, and I think I guess this is like a deeper thing, but like hearing, um, I was listening to a podcast. They were talking about, uh, they were talking to like these older people who were, were nearing the end of their lives. And the, the uh, common theme they all said was like, I wish I worried less. Like almost everything I ever worried about never happened. Right. So then it's, and then even in the short term, looking back, all the things I was worried about for a while didn't happen. Yeah. And ev you know, I was, I look back on pictures and I'm like, I was so anxious that day. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Nothing happened. Right. Like just trying to, and it's easier said than done. And it's a, journey and never no, ends, for sure but just like yeah it's yeah so much of it didn't end up happening and do you really want to live your whole life just in fear of something that might happen or is it just like well it could happen and if it does i'll deal with it then exactly yeah, i'm That's... not riding a roller coaster because i don't want to get de decapitated whereas in yeah. reality now you just didn't get to go on a roller yeah, coaster. yeah now you yeah. missed out on something good and it's like yeah if you got decapitated you know deal with it then. deal with, it then. <laughs> deal with yeah. the, the ramifications the skill issue put it back on yeah the, dude. that's something i talked a lot about with my therapist is like because I deal with anxiety, not like a hypochondriac anxiety, but like over worrying about everything mm -hmm. to the like to the extreme where I'm like not doing things because I'm like so anxious. Yeah, and what if? Because what if? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is, I think the things that have helped me is like, okay, well, if that fear comes to pass, then you will deal with it, deal with it then. Because I think I have a lot of fear about like my, you know, like s career going belly up and then having to like figure things out. But it's like, okay, well, one, that's highly unlikely to happen in an instant. Like you wake up one day. And right. Then, and it'll then be, a, it'll, you'll have time. To I'll prepare. have time. Yeah. Well, I'll see People that. are going to all get together at once and stop and watching. Stop. Yeah. yeah, yeah it'll be, be laughing slow. at you when it's happening. You can yeah. tell because I'll be pointing like that. Well, I'll, I'll be laughing. Yeah, sure. that's yeah. fine. Um, but I think the other thing that helped me is, um, my, and this is like something that may not be helpful for everyone, but like my anxiety is a lot of times a function of like a short-term focus. Like I'm focused on it. And if I just distract myself, mm -hmm. then I will probably not come back to that thought today. Yeah. And instead of like, instead of like saying, oh, don't just think about it, um, which may not be helpful for people uh, not not to what you said, but like that's in, in my brain. I'm like, oh, just don't think about it. One tool that my therapist gave me was just to say, hey, 
uh, set a timer for 30 minutes. You can worry about this all you want in 30 minutes. Mm. You know what I mean? But you, the odds are that you're not going to be in exactly yeah. the same headspace when that timer comes around. Right. And so then it's harder to get back into it. It's like when you like haven't played an RPG in like a long time. <laughs> yeah, you just have to start over. <laughs> and then you, you're like, I don't you have no idea shit. where you are. <laughs> like yeah. a, a sequel to Metroid or something. They're like, well, we have to take your powers away. Or, you know, you've got to find your powers. That's how yeah. the It's kind of like you were saying about eventually you just have stressed yourself out about every potential symptom yeah that's and how then i realized you were wrong but you felt the same way mm -hmm. and it's like if i was fine then why wouldn't i be fine now mm. and then if i'm wrong i'm wrong i'll, I'll deal with it then but yeah it's so it, yeah I, and like you said it's the solution isn't always just don't think about it like because that's hard to do and 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 that can make it worse if you just like bury it and bury it sure, eventually sure. it's going to explode right and i think that's what happened a couple of times when i had like really bad panic yeah. attacks it just boiled over but like for me i just had to go through all of that yeah. acknowledge it and then now i have this whole history of like well you thought this yeah. was this and it wasn't you thought this was this and it wasn't and you've got the recency of yeah you, you you have that example of things to pull from this happened to me um i can't remember but it, i was in a similar situation where i needed to just go do things and then my therapist was like when you go do things and it's fine then you will have a, a pool of more recent examples mm -hmm. to pull from. And that uh, that was helpful. Also acknowledging it. Yeah, not bearing it down, like acknowledging and kind of giving grace to your feelings. Like it's okay to feel these feelings. Yeah. Um, and to like kind of be self-aware of how little control you do have. I think sometimes we can get wrapped up, especially with anxiety stuff with ego a little mm -hmm. like well no but like i know anxiety this this is different like yeah. when somebody goes through a breakup and they're like, that's it can never be in another relationship that was like the craziest breakup ever and like, yeah i'll yeah, never be the same after so this. the last five you know like oh, at what yeah. point you'll get, is, you'll get oh my god yeah I, I probably talked about this before but like journaling which is something i used to do when i was really going through it and i would love to get back to um just got to build the habit again the uh there are some times that I journaled through a breakup where I'm writing, like I go back and look at it now and it's so helpful to see how intense the feelings are and then how detached I am from yeah. them currently. Because it was like, I was like, I don't know if I'll ever love again and shit like that. And it's like, I don't even, like I don't think about the person that I felt this way about the same way anymore. So the fact that I was feeling that way gives me hope. Like it, it almost like gives me hope that anything can pass. Yeah, you know what I absolutely. Mean? Yeah. Yeah. If, cause yeah, eventually you just forget the headspace you were in altogether and you look back on it, you, you almost cringe at like, oh, I thought I couldn't continue living. Right. And it's like, yeah. no, I just had to wait a couple yeah. weeks. <laughs> like, and, and I guess that's where like time heals all wounds come from. But like, obviously that's, that's good. Not, Did you just... Think about yeah, it. I did. That's good. I think time does, as you said, heal all yeah, wounds. Yeah, heal all wounds. And that's my quote. Mm -hmm. So Jarvis J. Ja Jarvis J. That's me. <laughs> I think, um, you know, to sleep is to dream. Because you can only dream when you're asleep. Because you, you can only dream when you're asleep, yeah. And when... Yeah, I wrote a book called The Art of War by Sun Tzu. And, um, <laughs> is that your, like, the, pen name? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, uh, you It's know, his pen name. It's like... Shy. Uh, yeah, like, it's my yeah. Tumblr name. That's what I wrote it on. <laughs> I published it on. And the uh, rule okay. one is look out. <laughs> hey, be careful. Look out. <laughs> Don't have a war. Oh yeah, that's, that's the art. So profound. The art of not having a war it should be the first. Like, don't do it. Yeah, um, just do stop. art. Like, well, yeah, do talk touring. it out. Don't Gaming is do a better it. art. Don't mm -hmm. do war. Uh, Play Guitar Hero. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> More like the fart this. of war. Am I Come right, on. fellas? What that? That's my book, More like dude. the fart of boar. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. You okay. got my ass. You don't like my book. Shit. It's fine. Yeah, well, on that note, <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. um, well, no, thanks for talking about it. I was just I was curious. I think that was, I think honestly, that's a great note to end on. Uh, like, we got some hope in there at the end. Yeah, I think so. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, there's so many like cliches that end up being true, but you just you have to kind of experience it yourself to believe it. Like, um, like going on walks, everyone will say, "Oh, go, mm. you know, drink water and go on walks," and it's like, yeah, whatever. But then you do, it and you're like, actually, I feel better. Yeah, I haven't bad. thought about my my yeah. problems, and you will not do it again. Yeah, in a, ma a matter of time, there'll be another oh, weekend absolutely. where you just don't do it, and then you relearn the lesson. And I, one thing I find really hard about like giving advice to like some because we have pretty broad age group 
of yeah. range of friends these days. I think it is just mm-hmm. like creative community stuff. But I don't generally like giving advice. Yeah. I don't mind coaching, you know, like encouraging someone to think about something. But every now and then I do have to hold myself back from with some of our younger friends being like, you 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 only feel this because you're young. Because you'll yeah. do this 20 times more in the next eight years. Yeah. And, and then we'll you'll do it realize, 10 more times in the next four years. Yeah. And, and I just, I, I, I know that sounds crazy. And I know this doesn't help because that doesn't change anything. The cortisol is still rushing through your brain. The upset is yeah. still there. Like, you know. But then on the other side, I am, I am, we're, we're, we're all, you know, we're old and tired. But at the same time, it does feel nice to have like, um, almost like a vaccine, like just an, a normal, automatic comfort for certain issues like yeah yeah i know that i i know i would normally feel guilty but hey man i there's a shortage i couldn't get my adhd medication i'm not going to feel guilty that's why right i can get shit done because of the exact reason yeah Mm -hmm. and yeah and, and as always i think forgiving yourself for like not being perfect right now is also like if you're not perfect at implementing strategies to like make yourself better oh i can't stop thinking about this thing now i'm beating myself up for not being able to control my every thought like Isn't it crazy yeah. we did that at like 16 yeah <laughs> like yeah. 16 years old like i can't i figure life out at all yeah i can't believe i made this mistake it's like <laughs> no yeah that will yeah. be one of many to come i mean <laughs> even uh short-term things like like uh, Amanda and I were talking about this. This is more of a general thing. Like on the, on our trip, there's a couple things where like, oh, we did this wrong or we should have done this instead. Right. But it's it's so easy to just beat yourself up. It's like, of course, you're not going to make the perfect decision all the time. Right. Or like, oh, we booked the wrong room or we should have done this restaurant instead of this. And it's like, yeah. but okay, it was, okay. it, it could have, yeah. If you could go back to day one of your life and relive everything perfectly, it'd probably be pretty boring actually. Yeah. And you would have, like you wouldn't have learned the lessons you needed to learn right. or like, I don't know. You'd be it, boring yeah. as a person. You would like, be. Hanging be out such with a, you would be like, there'd be oh. no depth to you at yeah, all. Yeah, you face no hardship because every time it worked out. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You'd be like some other people we've met. <laughs> 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 other people we know and don't hang out with. Yeah. Don't be like them. Don't oh, be like man. them. Yeah. Um, Drew, thanks so much for joining. I looked over and it hurt my neck. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where is he? <laughs> well, I'm happy to be here. I had a lot of fun and I'm glad that I could add pain to your life. Yeah, um, it, as you always in do. In hindsight, maybe you should have sat here and I hey, should, so you would have just had guest to Guest chair the guest chair. You've <laughs> got to sit in your little special chair. Right. So I mean, speaking special. of hypochondria, I, I do love the idea that in five years from now doing the show as much as we do, the dog's just like, why Jordan, your neck is like yeah, busted, you're always kind of always, always looking over to the right like yeah. that. Huh? Yeah. I do have the okay, one cringy thing I'll say about myself, by the way. I do a gym look, you know, like uh-huh. Sometimes if I've been like streaming or recording a lot, because my camera is there, it's to my oh. left. And so something peculiar will happen. I will just go like <laughs> muscle memory is I will just like, naturally like <laughs> Okay. Hit, that hit just the stream deck. It's like the later seasons. The <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the later seasons of the office where they're like, Who are you looking at? Like where they got super yeah. meta. Too meta, yeah. yeah. Oh, the cameraman. They like wrote in a storyline for the cameraman. Yeah, yeah. That was fun. This is the end of this episode, but if you'll join us over on patreon.com slash sad. Boys, you can listen to Sad Boys Nights, our premium Patreon only podcast, the three P's, where we're gonna uh, read some cringy fan submitted stories um, with Drew, who will be joining us. Drew That's will me. be showing off his reading comprehension. Mm-hmm. I'm quite good at it. Okay. Uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> if we give you like one of those tests to like be an American citizen. Uh, well, I will say from my experience, um, uh, one of the compliments I've gotten on videos is like, I'll read a long comment that's very grammatically incorrect, but do it perfectly. And they're like, how does he do that? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I guess I just speak that language. Of it's like, my 18th try. <laughs> <laughs> it's also that. You didn't see how many takes I did. I wrote the video. Yeah. So I know what's the secret. It. Yeah. One time when I was at camp as a kid, maybe about 13, these girls at my table at dinner kept talking about how good their lip gloss tasted. So I was like, oh, can I try some? Hee <laughs> hee. And the lip gloss owner put some on my finger for me to try the lip gloss on. And I guess all reason and logic evaporated from my brain at that moment because I just. <laughs> Well, we'll tell you what they did. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> on Sad Boys Night fuck? in his butt. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Drew, thank you for joining us. We end every episode of Sad Boys with a particular phrase. Keep it crispy. That's Pete Holmes. Oh, okay. Wait, <laughs> so close. We could. Maybe. He, he would never know. Um, he would probably never know. That's <laughs> true. We, we love, love you. you. And we're sorry. Boom! Thanks again to Simper for sponsoring this video. Go ahead and click the link in the description and subscribe today. Gucci girl, Gucci girl, how you doing? How you moving, girl? Moving, girl, how's your day looking? That future girl, future girl, yeah, we on now. Take my money, go away, are you want it? Gucci rich for me.